Do you remember the movie Her? Well, put on your 3D glasses because we're living in a world where artificial intelligence is stealing the spotlight and stirring up some legal drama. Actress Scarlett Johansson says the tech company over AI stole her voice, which begs the question, what is the current state of the law with generative AI? We're speaking with the personal injury law firm of Ashton and Price, recognized as one of Sacramento County's most prominent personal injury law firms. Let's welcome Craig Fontaine Ashton of Ashton and Price. Hello, Craig. Good morning. Okay, so Craig, when we think of the 2013 movie Her, it seems that art and life are kind of imitating each other a bit in that. Right, so what we've gone from is basically this information gathering, like when you say Siri, what's the capital of Bulgaria, or the best law firm in, in Sacramento, Ashton and Price. <laughs> <laughs> That'll give you information, right? But now we have generative AI, which mm -hmm. means that it's a large language model where essentially these algorithms anticipate the next letter. And you put something in and it creates brand new text, brand mm -hmm. new images. And so there's issues as to what do we get to protect as creators of that information? Right. And what is new text or new images that ultimately have no protection whatsoever? And that's what we're dealing with with the Scarlett Johansson So ta take us back to how Scarlett Johansson and OpenAI first kind of crossed paths. Right, so San Francisco, we're living in, in the Northern California. There's 60% of all the AI companies in the world are, are in this area. So we're the leaders of this. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, Sam Altman, who's the president of OpenAI, which is ChatGBT, if you know that one. Yeah. He, he reached out to Scarlett Johansson and said, look, we would like to have a bridge between the creatives and this new technology and your voice from her, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to have this on our basically a virtual AI assistant. We'd like to use you. And she said, no, probably because you never know what the AI assistant, they, they have what's called hallucinations. So they can start saying things with her voice about Nazis or something. She goes, I don't want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So they reached out to her again in May. So September of last year, now in May, she said, uh, she, before she gave an answer, they have a voice that sounds a lot like hers for the new assistant that they have with uh, ChatGBT. Oh wow! Okay, so what are the two types of um, what are the two main types of AI? So basically, we have the the one that you know with Siri or you know with Alexa. Mm -hmm. You know what, what's the capital of Bulgaria? Sofia, right? So okay, cool. I didn't know that. But then you have generative AI, which you can put in text and say, "Write me." a letter from Ernest Hemingway's perspective, and it'll do that. Mm -hmm. It's brand new. So it's called generative AI. So that's the difference, and that's where the law is starting to figure out what do we do with that. Wow, okay, so what federal and state protections are in place, or which rights that already exist can be applied to this scenario, especially to Scarlett Johansson? Right, so it's not super good at it, because a voice is something that you can say, it sounds like Scarlett Johansson, but as long as you don't say this is Scarlett Johansson, mm -hmm. then you're fine. Like somebody you po uh, paints like uh, Leonardo da Vinci in the Mona Lisa, as long as they don't say I'm Leonardo da Vinci, then you're okay. So the idea is that there's a progression using things that are similar, mm -hmm. that aren't protected versus trademark or copyright. So if you think of a trademark, think of you know the Nike swoosh, uh, or think of uh, when you think of copyright, think of like a poem. Mm -hmm. So those are things that are protected federally, but in terms of the protection for a voice like this, it's basically name, image, and likeness. Uh -huh. And so that's what we have in California. So if somebody puts out Scarlett Johansson's voice that sounds like hers and it's so confusing, then the Federal Trade Commission and then California state law would protect that because it's basically committing a fraud on the consumer. But otherwise, if it just sounds like Scarlett Johansson, she doesn't really have any protection whatsoever. And even though she was in conversations with them and she said, ah, no, I'm not gonna do this, but then there's something that sounds eerily similar to her. As long as they don't say this is Scarlett Johansson mm -hmm. and it looks and it sounds like Scarlett Johansson, it's fine. Um, if you see any uh, new movie where they have somebody, let's say Megan Fox, next thing you know, there's 20 other actresses just like Megan Fox. Mm -hmm. And, and you can't, Megan Fox can't say they look like me, stop that. Okay, so let's look at AI lawsuits. Which ones are the ones to watch out for right now, Craig? So George R. R. Martin, so basically the Game of Thrones. So what he's saying is that you took all my information and threw it into this database and I didn't uh, authorize that and now you're creating new stories using my information. So that's a violation of my copyright. So that's one of them. And the other is what we're doing with uh, music, uh, where you're taking somebody's voice, sounds like it, putting out something brand new and then calling it a brand new music, which it is because it's generated. Mm -hmm. And that, so that's why they're having difficult times with plagiarism in school with papers, because you can't say, well, this paper looks like somebody else's because it's brand new words. So that's the hard part about what do we do 
with this new information that's coming out that really is borrowing in a very significant way more than before somebody else's creativity and then allowing people to be confused by it. Yeah, it sounds like there's some sticky situations there. What are some key takeaways that we can take away from these high profile cases that we're hearing about? Well, what you can take away from this is that ultimately we're having a difficult time grappling with this, which yeah. is we want to promote creativity but we also want to recognize that creativity, so Socrates taught Aristotle, who taught Plato, who taught Dr. Phil. So Dr. Phil doesn't have to give credit to Aristotle or Plato, right? Mm -hmm. But the idea is creativity is essentially a moving line. So that is something that we can't protect, but the specificity of information needs to be protected. We're having a difficult time with that with AI because this is brand new. Yeah, sounds like more continuous conversations that need to happen. Craig Ashton, thanks for filling us in about it and getting the conversation going. My pleasure, and, and I'm real. So this is not AI, He's Craig, real. this is real, okay. Craig. There's no illusion there. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, thanks so much. All right, you can find out more by going to ashtonandprice.com.